Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I have Michael Brave Jayhawk Jensen here with me. Uh, happy uh, Thanksgiving to everybody. Hope everybody enjoys uh, the time with their family in top front of the TV or whatever it is you do. I'll share this one story before we get into the survivor stuff. So when I first uh, met my wife and we were engaged or whatever, I was invited to the first Thanksgiving over at her house. And um, and I said, uh, she was, oh, you're going to, you know, we're going to go over there. I'm like, okay, what time are we going to go? Like usually like halftime of the first game. And she goes, well, what do you mean? <laughs> the first game, right? She goes, what game? I'm like, she's like, you're telling me this football on Thanksgiving? And I'm like, oh, I'm like, you're kidding, right? You have to keep something in mind. So she grew up with just a sister and, and a house just full of girls. And none of them knew any, watched football. And they literally didn't know that there was football on Thanksgiving. But that's my, pretty incredible. But, but, but my in laws, just being the greatest people that they are, like they took that as this whole like challenge, whatever it is, that this, when I got there for Thanksgiving, they had like my, my own little seat set up. They had the TV <laughs> on and whatever, little my chips, like right in front of because the, they usually kept Thanksgiving up in the living room, whatever it is. But they had a special thing just for me, like or whatever it is, to watch the football. I know slowly but surely it developed a little bit more. But it was it was really it was really funny. Uh, it was, and, you know that was uh, one of my great memories of my first couple of years of my life. Um, okay, so we are in week twelve of Survivor, and we'll review week eleven. And uh, first of all, shout out to Brave Jayhawk for continuing to. Plow along, just to remind everybody what we're what we're doing here. Uh, Michael, you know, played very, you know, very sound, aggressive style, and was out really, really early. And he's been kind of, uh, you know, continuing to keep his brain going and keep this thing going, which I really appreciate. And remember, last year I was out a little bit early, and we kind of just we 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 sweated and 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 dealt with the uh, Bray Jayhawks entry all the way into the playoffs, where he cashed for six figures. So we're going to be doing hopefully the same thing with with me. Um, were my pool that uh, I was in two pools going into last week. I had a kind of a hybrid pool, which was a single with doubles later, and this just kind of psycho double pick pool, which had doubles in week five and then started up again in week nine and doubles again to go all the way to the end. That started with 8,200 people. Um, so the single pick pool was uh, I took Washington and lost in the double pick pool this was one of those situations where you know I, I had good leverage on everybody we had san francisco and miami who nobody had available we took both them they won and we got you know we ran real pretty decently at least with the uh, with the opponents because like half the pool ended up taking washington um and they lost Got a little unlucky that you know had a couple of people take denver and they they survived a couple of people to detroit survived but we got to sweat because that thing is now down to 60 people, okay, from 8,200 with doubles throughout. And uh, this ain't going too much longer. Let's put it that way. Um, uh, so that's what happened in week 11. And do you have any comments on week 11? Do you follow what people did in Circa? Do you have anything to say about week 11 before we go on to week 12? I don't think I have any comments at all. No. <laughs> I can't play the Chiefs lost. I still don't understand, but yeah. I'm not worried. We, oh, we really good. gave we really gave that one away, but well, uh, not, not too good. worried. That's good for me because they'll be more motivated. So, okay, so week number 12, let's talk specifically about my double pick pool thing first, okay? Yep. And because it's like it's, it's trivially easy. So so what I'd like to do is, first of all, I want to share the uh, just the top favorite teams and rank them and show you the, the, the disparity. <clears throat> Then we're going to talk about the availability in my pool. And again, this is not luck. This is the, something we set up like a long time ago. So you have Dallas, who is an 11 point favorite. You have Miami, who's a 10 point favorite. You have San Francisco, who's a seven point favorite. You have Kansas City, who's like an eight, a 10 point favorite. You have Detroit, who is an eight point favorite. And then like an enormous drop to everybody else. Okay. Um, so if you have any of these five teams, you have, you know, you're in okay state. But if you don't have them, then you're talking about New England, Tennessee, or whatever. So let's talk about what's available in our pool. All right. So we're talking about Dallas, Miami, San Francisco, KC, and Detroit. All right. So first of all, Dallas, there is one person that has them available. We we don't, but whatever. Good for them. Um, Miami Dolphins, they have zero available. So nobody can take them. 
the San Francisco 49ers, there are zero people that can take them. Okay. So the only two like left possible are Kansas City and Detroit. Detroit has one that can take them, and that would be me. Okay. So so <laughs> we have just like incredible leverage with, with Detroit. That is trivially easy. And then the next one is the Kansas City Chiefs. Only seven have them available, of whom we are one of them. So we have two, basically the only two teams that are bigger, that, that are playable, uh, seven points, and nobody else has them available, and we are dropping this on them, right? The other teams that people have available in this pool, 60 people all have the Patriots, all right? Good luck, you know? And keep in mind, you have to have, you have to have, you have to get two. It's not just enough to get lucky with one. You got to get through with two teams. Um, so you got New England. They're a three or four point. They're a big, I think, a three point favorite. You got the Tennessee Titans. Everybody's got them available. They're a four point favorite. Yeah, let me just jump in. I, I actually have all these teams written down, and in, in, in the pool that I'm in, that was singles. Yeah, there's eight teams I wrote down, and they are between fifty four and sixty out of sixty available. Yeah, and the Vikings. And the, and, Okay. And, and so all these teams are 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. And all of the ownership are going to go to all these three point favorites. And so, like, my, there's, there's, I mean, there's obviously no decision. And it's just up to the, up to the, up to the math gods to see, say, listen, guys, you guys want to try to get through with, with two of these three, you know, peace, you know, good, good luck to you. We got the two eight point favorites. And that's just the way it is. One one kind of offbeat difference in our pool and some of the others, which is kind of interesting. You look at at Philadelphia. Um, they look like, according to Office Football Pool, three percent owned. Um, but in our pool, thirty eight people have them available, which is really interesting. You know what I mean? Um, and in double picks, whatever. This is going to be the last. I mean, it's, this is not going to sixteen seventeen. Okay. Um, so I think that people are going to take the Eagles as well. And this is weird. You know? Yeah. In this format only. Yes. Yeah. So you yeah. can definitely take Philadelphia. So, so yeah. as far as, as far as decisions go there, there is none for me. Um, and it's just kind of up to the pool to see if, which if they can figure out which of the three point favorites are going to win. Um, so this is actually, that was actually very poor planning by the people that have Philadelphia left. You should never have Philadelphia left in this format. It makes absolutely no sense. Yep. Um, I don't know if they lost the last game that they were a really nice play. I think uh, they they only had one loss. So it was it Washington? I can't remember they lost to. But the rules of your pool dictate who you should play, who you should save, and who yeah. you need to – who you have to play. Yeah. And there is no reason to have ever – just looking at the schedule, you never would have wanted Philadelphia – in this format where you have doubles starting in 11 on through the rest of the way. I mean, we're talking week 14, 15 at Dallas, at Seattle, you know, they're, they're just not, especially at Dallas, but at Seattle, I mean, what are you hoping like you get there and you're the only one that has them left and they're like a three, three, four point favorite. Seattle should have been completely dumped uh, by every single person much, much earlier in this thing. Now, that was a pretty big mistake to That's allow for that. That's what we got lucky about. Again, I feel bad, you know, whatever it is. But one of the things that we were dealing with was that in week number 12, this week, um, you know, everybody was going to have, or it's a decent amount of people were going to have Cincinnati available, right? Um, and oh, as early as a week ago, they were probably going to be a six-point favorite, right? Against yeah. I didn't mind because they were going to be popular, but then also I'd have to worry about Cincinnati in week 14, who was rating to be a big favorite against, uh, against Indianapolis or whatever it is. But for once the injury God sort of like shine on my entries favor when Joe Burrow got ruled out. So for the rest of the season, I feel terrible, terrible for him, but yeah, listen, we got, we got, we got money to win here. So, so, uh, so I think the good way to look at let's look at this from, from your perspectives, you know, the absolute, you know, you're at the top of the food chain, yeah. but there's no, there's no discussion, nope. but there's a lot of discussion for yeah. how this pick, pick breakdown is looking and then what the strategy should be if you're anybody else. That's right. Uh, so base, basically I think Eric said that zero people have Miami, mm -hmm. zero people have San Francisco, uh -huh. seven people have Kansas city, which is, which he is one of them. Yeah. 
No one has Detroit, or you know, what you have Detroit. I'm the only. I'm the only Detroit. So basically zero. And there's and one. No Dallas. And one person is Dallas. Okay, so this is this is the stage of the pool where I, if I was motivated, I would have did a visual. But this is where I would start because it's double picks specifically. You really have to visualize what the situation is here. You have three teams that essentially no one else is picking other than Eric or nobody. That one person is 100% taking Dallas. Yes. And they're going to pick somebody else. And the somebody else, I assume, is not Kansas City. So they're going to be taking you know Tennessee down for their second pick. A high majority of the people in the pool, we're talking about 50 people or so, they're taking Tennessee down for both of their picks. And w- 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 the reason that is very important to consider if you're still in this pool in that same situation is look at these pick breakdown percentages on, off, on, on Survivor Grid. These teams, I wrote all the point spreads down. The, it, it, I mean, it makes no sense. I, I don't – this is not actually not going to happen. There's no way New England's going to be 2% picked and mm-hmm. Tennessee's going to be 25 and 20. Uh, Minnesota and, and Tennessee will be 25 and 20. But if you look at the sort, and I've, and I've mentioned this several times throughout the season, when people are, are, are dropping or force dropped, they're pretty much taking the highest uh, available favorite remaining. And that is exactly what these pick percentages are. Tennessee's the biggest favorite, 20% pick. Minnesota is right below them, 25% pick. They're both – everybody has both of them. Tennessee is a little bit more available than the one that I'm looking at. Somehow, New England is not picked, even though they have the same exact win odds as Minnesota, and they're the same, they have the same availability. I guess it's because they're on the road. But after that, we're talking – look at Denver 2.5. Indianapolis two and a half, Atlanta one and a half, Pittsburgh one and a half. It looks like Atlanta, uh, Arizona is off the board right now. The combined pick percentage for these five teams is like five percent, but Tennessee is going to be twenty plus, and Minnesota is going to be twenty plus. So, assuming this is correct, and it's going to be more or less correct, New England's going to be more than two percent picked. That makes no sense. But you cannot take ten in this format. You cannot take Tennessee or Minnesota if you're still in this pool. Right. You, you you just can't do it. You you have you have to suck it up, and you have to take somebody else. And the well, reason you take uh, somebody else is win. every everybody's going to take either Tennessee or Minnesota. You don't think people? Uh, are gonna uh, uh, yes, they are. But just go, I want to at least go off of what the only, what the this only is thing showing us. I mention it is is you know if you take um New England, like New England's literally you can't use them again. Like Tennessee, I mean, ostensibly you could use them in thirteen. Like, yeah, in Houston is like going to be re- actually pretty popular in thirteen. Um, at minus three, remember, remember, like no one has anybody available. You know what I mean? Like, like no one's yeah. got anything. Like, no one's got Miami, Kansas City, Dallas is going to be going. Jacksonville is going to be, and and people like like flooded Jacksonville last week. But even so, like Jacksonville is going to have um. Jacksonville is gonna whoever still has Jacksonville left, there's 12 of them. Okay, that's it. Yeah, you could definitely yeah, you could definitely take Jacksonville because well, no, because you probably want them next week. You want them next week. If only well, 12 people meant. have them, you should save them. Yeah, yeah. So I'm talking about 13 now, like Jacksonville. Okay. What I was saying <laughs> is that is that teams like New England this week, I think are gonna be probably more popular than like Tennessee. Um, just because Tennessee Week 13 is like impossible. So so you have to have some yeah. for 13. And Tennessee at least is somewhat viable in 13. Um, yeah. Where New England is not. Um, actually, I mean, no, New England's going to be a four-point underdog in, 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 in 13. Um, the other thing about 13, I'm just going to look at Pitts, Pittsburgh. They're going to be the chalk in 13. Um, so right, I was going back to what, what, to, what to do, what people are going to do in 12. What what do you think like in my pool about Philadelphia? You think everybody's got Philadelphia? Not everybody. You think that Philadelphia they're you know they're fifty percent available. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, between all these three point favorites, do you think that maybe people say you know what Philly's just a team I just like better that I feel more comfortable with? Yeah, them? I'm pro- I mean, probably. The, um, I I would take none of them. I mean, well, you you know that. I, I, yeah. I'm just going to take. 
I'm going to take Denver, Indianapolis. Right. Yeah. I'll just take, I'll take the biggest favorites uh, off that next draw. Uh, they're minus 136 in the money line. Minnesota, New England's minus 166, minus 168. You're giving up a little bit, but we're talking about 5%, 10% of the pick percentage ownership, according to Survivor Grid, as those other teams. So This is, this uh, is really the lesson of the year, actually, because – well, not the lesson of the year. I mean, because you've been talking about this for two years now. But this 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 concept has come up many times this season. I actually said to have to spend a little more time working on this, maybe in the offseason. This idea of not just dropping, but like dropping from the droppers. You know, this that's that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty advanced type of concept, um, which you have been on for like quite a while. And yeah, it, and, and this is really incredible. Like, what's the difference between I mean what's the win percentage between a minus 136 and a minus 168? It's not that big of a difference. You're giving up less than less than 10% of your win equity to I, drop I, to a team that's not even owned. I agree. If I had, if I didn't have any of these guys available, uh, I, I, I would agree with you. I would go, well, I'll tell you who we would go with. We would go with them. Um, I mean, it would be Denver or Indianapolis. Um, it'd be Indianapolis. My friend, my partner actually really loves them against the spread. And, and I told you what happens. I mean, if it's ever close, yeah. Uh, his, his against the spread thing just kind of like Trump's. So we'll, we would end up taking Indianapolis. And I definitely think that that, that, that idea, for those of you who are still in pools, which quite honestly, Mike, I don't think there are many. Like there, there's one, no. I don't know who's listening. Um, but I know there's one dude in our Discord who's really deep in a couple with the true suited or something. Um, yep. Yeah, he's really deep. He's down to like just a couple of people or something like that. So I don't know who's really in still, but if you are, and you don't have those two teams available, those those top teams available. This this could be like the last bit of like really really great value added. You're getting to this podcast. What Mike just said that go if you if you're between these three point favorites, don't 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 take the ones that are that everybody's doing. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, Just, I mean, th and this one's great because if if every single person in this in the format that you're playing where there's doubles, every single person is going is going to take Tennessee, New England, Minnesota, or Philadelphia, That's at right. least one of them, at, right. le at least at least one of them. Right. And there's a very good chance that but they all lose. <laughs> they, you know, not just they all lose, but there's a very good chance that two of them are taken from that group by almost everybody. Right. And right. if you get, if you get, meaning if you get three losses out of that group of four, yeah, you don't need them all to lose. <laughs> that's right. You, that's, that's the thing when you're playing doubles, you're, you're just hoping that, half of them lose or, or three quarters yeah. and you're not you're just not dropping very much we're talking about you have a 62 percent win percentage win percentage chance with tennessee and then you have like a 57 percent chance with, with, with denver i mean right. really what there's there's yeah. no difference there except for that if you pick tennessee you cannot win the pool this week you know no one could really win the pool because you're probably going to win right and the person who has dallas you know the person with dallas's pick is very very important you're you're, you're there's no discussion. All, all we do is give high praise to you for putting yourself in a situation. But the person that has Dallas remaining, they have the most interesting decision because the guy, they is, have to take guy, Dallas and they got to decide if their second pick is. The second pick is very important. This is the guy right here. Okay. Um, this DHFYBTM. Uh, this is the guy that has Dallas available. So notably. Does he, does he have Kansas City available? Does not. Um okay. He's going to have to, and he does not have Philly either. He's going to have to be taking New England, Minnesota, or Tennessee. It's going to be one of those. Um, I'm trying to think what I would do in his spot. Um, uh, now, now again, I, 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 I'm going to take Denver or Indianapolis. I mean, for sure. But actually, in, 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 four, question. in 14, he neither has Cleveland, New, nor, nor New Orleans. He burned them both in doubles. Uh, in 13, he does not have Pittsburgh available because he burned them two weeks ago. Um, so in 13, he's going to be playing Tampa. And uh, something else, maybe Houston. So it's going to be one of these. It's going to be ten. It's going to be Tennessee or Minnesota, uh, or 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 um or New England. It's just got to be one of yeah. Them. And, re and really, next week it, it's going it, to the same exact situation is going to be on next week. No one, no one's going to have Kansas City left. No right. one has our, Miami already. No one will have Dallas left. No one has Detroit left already. So that leaves that leaves Jacksonville, Tampa Bay, Chargers, Pittsburgh, Houston, Philly, Atlanta. So Tennessee is going to be the team that I would probably take next week at you know at, at current spreads or or Atlanta. Philadelphia is an interesting one for your format because 
there's still going to be two probably available. And if they're, if they're like a three point favorite against San Francisco, I just wouldn't do it. I would rather take a two or a one and a half, but the same things, the exact same things going to happen next week. Just with different teams. Everyone's going to be on Pittsburgh and Houston and, and the chargers and Tampa and Tampa. and Tampa and Jack. Actually next week's not as clear because. Well, it also depends on who advances, you know, what they have left. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, there are high, the, the, the teams are higher winning percentage next week, but, you know, I'm still dropping from it. Who knows what – I mean, the, the Jacksonville – we can't even really go too deep into it because if Browning is awful, then Jacksonville could be 10-point favorites. Yeah. And then, then I would automatically take Jacksonville regardless of how many people have them. And uh, the oh, same thing with Tampa. I mean, you know, Tampa might be pretty ch- – does everybody have Champa in yeah. these pools? Oh yeah, right. Okay, and then what about the Chargers? No, everybody burned them at eight. Well, actually, that's not true. There are people that still have them. Um, yeah, my my, my they're, they're twenty oh. they're twenty four out of sixty yeah. in the pool that I'm looking at. So yeah, that's right. 20, but, that's correct. But 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 the thing is, you know, it, it looks so attractive, but in a double pick format, it's not. It's not because most of those, assuming everybody advances this week. Most people are going to take them, and then they, they and then they're way too chalky. So you'd be better off like taking this, the the team right below them because if the Chargers are the biggest this the biggest second team available for people, they're just going to take them, and you should almost just lay off of them. It, it, but but then you can all oh, the, oh but the Chargers in your format are playable in fourteen fifteen as well. So you now for si- for single pick format, if I was in circa. I don't know what uh, we, we 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 never really developed a plan for Thanksgiving. I mean, obviously, we, we would be on one of the favorites. We're not. We wouldn't. I, I think the only exception would be if you're in some weird spot where Seattle or something. But but we would have had to already use Detroit, and I don't know what we would have done. But all the favorites will be taken. But I think a few people are forced out of of the favorites. I think from that link I sent you, and some people will be on Green Bay. But on on Sunday. So let's do a little circa talk. I'm going to eliminate. So I'm eliminating Dallas, Miami, San Francisco, and Detroit. Oh, four four of the top five favorites. This 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 has been the case for almost the entire season, where these teams were the biggest favorites. Do people have Kansas City available in circa? Oh, I have, I have not. I have not checked, but it's obviously more than zero. I have no idea. Um, I mean, this is this is very simple because you get to eliminate four teams because of they're on Thanksgiving. It's pretty easy. It, 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 the the, the strategy is going to be more or less the same as what your what the strategy is in, in a double pick pool because no one can take those top teams. You just have to drop. You you cannot take Tennessee. Yeah. You cannot take Minnesota. Yeah. I wouldn't take New England. I, I would be ta- I would a hundred percent be taking Denver if you have them. De- Denver or, or probably Indianapolis. I mean, you know, we're splitting hairs here, but. Probably would take Indianapolis because maybe Denver. I mean, remember you got to take twenty winners in Circa, so you really do need to look out at yeah who might I have to take in week seventeen or eighteen. And in Denver in week sixteen is a possibility. You know, they just have the best available game left. Indianapolis plays Las Vegas in seventeen, but you know their win percentages are are pretty are more or less equal. So it really doesn't make you know you're not like giving up much, but I, I'm very interested to see what the pick breakdown is in Circa for the main slate because it's it's going to be the same thing. I mean, Tennessee's going to be – Tennessee, Minnesota, and New England are going to be picked at a very heavy count, and it's just going to be a very big mistake to do that. It, it, it feels a little dirty, but it's like, you know, those teams are going to, are going to take up like 60 – 70% of the ownership – and you know, plus those three teams, and you can just take a two and a half point favorite. And really, what's the difference? No one has a big favorite available. The, the Kansas City people are the only people. Tennessee is the second is the second biggest favorite on the main slate. Yeah. So why would you why would you want to take the second biggest favorite when when when, when you can take a team that's a one point less and then is going to be much less on? Well, what I was going to ask is this: so I pres- I presume that whoever has Kansas City available is going to play them. No, oh, I sure would. Yeah, I would. I, I'm going to look it up right now. How many people have them? But yeah, if you you know, this buy. is one of those things where I would just, I would just, I would eat all the chalk. I would, I, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't care. The only thing again, I was trying to figure out how to lose. So, like, if 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 you had, I see, I don't know if people have left left available. So, so 
I'm just looking ahead to 13. Like, because 13, I just know it's a tough week in general. And Tampa's going to be just through the roof chalk. And if somehow you could get to 13 with KC available, that would be like some insane leverage. But I, I wouldn't give that up right now. In 12. I mean, you just have to drop them in 12. Wow. Actually, okay. Right? A lot of people have Kansas City left, uh, 25%. There, there won't be that many left anymore. I mean, they're going to they're gonna blast them this week. I, I, I would not. Uh... Do they, do they, I wonder if those people have Jacksonville available for 13, you know? or, or Well, they all have Tampa available. I mean, is yeah, it, I guess the, it's a work yeah, job. Kansas 40, City. 40, 40% have uh, 40. The reason I would never drop because I, you, you, you'd you have to drop from to, to the two and a half. So I, yeah, like you I, cannot drop to Tennessee or, or Minnesota. So you're, you're dropping too low. I would rather drop next week and take a pick them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and, but, like, if anybody's listening to this and somehow they're alive in Circa and you're fortunate enough to have gotten to where you are and you still have Kansas City available, I would bless, I would bless them. I would play. The them. only way – like I, I would 100% take Kansas City. But, you know, if someone make like forgets or makes a mis- – like or, or gets fancy or cute, the only way it works out is if they're one of the only ones that doesn't do it because – True. If you have if you have Kansas City available in fifteen or sixteen, then that's going to be fantastic. But if if eight other people do it with you, it doesn't it just doesn't matter. Um, what matters is being as lone as possible with that save. I would much rather just take Kansas City this week because the other side is dropping to Denver, Indianapolis, and then assuming this what's the spread next week. Uh, Chiefs are me like a touchdown favorite. They're yeah, they're 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 minus seven. Well, if you drop seven, you know you're, you're dropping the pick'em games. It's, it's basically the exact same thing. Now I'm not saying I wouldn't take Jacksonville, Tampa, or or the char or the Chargers next week in Circa. I, I I certainly would probably take one of those because whoever has Kansas City's pro- you know might just take them, um, you know, or more than zero will. So. I would just I would just take Kansas City this week, and if they were forty percent, if they were forty percent available, I'd probably do it too. So only because you posted it on in, in my Telegram, uh, I'm going to post it up here as well. A guy, a guy I follow, um, a good dude. Uh, I don't know what else he does, but I know he does Survivor stuff. It's this guy Cheese Bets on on Twitter. Um, he's really really super sharp with his ownership projections in Circa. And when I was still in Circa, I would always like wait. I, I couldn't wait because he listen. He's also he's also very fair. He waits until it's too late you know, to, to, to act on his recommendations before he puts it up. He waits till the picks are closed. Then he says, oh. here, here, this is what he projects the, uh, cause he's in pool two. Right. So then, then he projects what the, uh, what the popularity is. He's, he's, he's as close as there, as I've seen as someone that could predict them. And he, I, listen, for those of you that are still in or whatever, he brings up a very, very valid point regarding uh, a, a, a situation like this, where, where, Everybody's got the Lions, but most people have the Lions available, and and very few have anybody else. Like some people have Dallas or whatever it is, and and the question would be like if if you do have Detroit available, do would you even want to take them? You know, would you consider playing playing Green Bay as a small underdog? Um, not even a small underdog, as like a big underdog, as like an eight point underdog. Um, you know, if you look at the the EV calculations, it's pretty much the same. You know, um. I don't know, you know, I, and, and this is, listen, I, I don't know if I would have it in me uh, if, it, if it's close like this. Like if it was even, if it was worse, I mean, I would take my shot, but if the EV calculation is, 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 is identical either way, um, I don't know what, I don't really know what I would do here. I mean, cause I know, I, I, I know you like, like Brave J. Hawk, when he made, he made it to Thanksgiving and a couple of years ago, the Cowboys were <clears> chalky <throat> over the Redskins and he didn't have any problem just taking the Redskins plus four or whatever it was. Um, against against Dallas, but would you have it in you to take a plus eight team? You know, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's definitely a big difference. I think I'm pretty sure we targeted Dallas from from the beginning of the season, and again, we didn't we didn't make it through week one, but our our, our very early inclination was that Detroit was going to be the save team for 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 Thanksgiving, and we we would have waited out a few weeks before picking one of them. It, it's I don't. I don't think we ever would have gotten to Thanksgiving and had both Detroit and Dallas available. But again, I was out twelve weeks ago, so it's hard to, it's hard to remember what you know what the path would have could have you know hypothetically could have been. But 
we I I was pretty sure that Detroit was going to be the chalk team, and it was just very hard. There's just no way we would have got there in San Francisco. Um, you know, I would have I I think I we would we would have used them earlier. So I think it was that yeah. It, 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 it it's it's tough, but it's not tough because when when you end up looking at all there's there's two ways to look at it. You you look at it for win percentage slash like moving on percentage. Or you look at it for EV and the less teams that are available, the less people that are left, yeah. the more clear it is what the EV is. And that's why yeah. you, know, you can easily make the argument. I think some people are forced in, you know, some people are probably just forced into this, uh, which makes it annoying because if people weren't forced on, onto it, then I would do it. But my, my fear would be if, if, a, if enough people are forced onto it or it's already close, I, I might I might lay off from taking Green Bay because what if too many other people do it? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people left. There's that's the thing. It depends on the nature of the pool. It depends on what you think of the other players. You know, because that's that's the way GTO works. You know, if everybody's got both Lions and Packers available, and everybody that has that 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 thinks that everybody's going to take Detroit, all of a sudden people start taking Green Bay, and then they become too popular, sort of. Like relative, like relative to their chances to win. So it's uh my, my favorite stage. The reason when I say there's too many people left, this is a, a my favorite stage in Survivor Pool. I like Week One. Week One's very exciting, but my, my the the time that I get excited is when it approaches. We're gonna call it like final table time. And l- last year, this is very clear in ours. We got down to like twenty something, like twenty eight people. We had th- we had three entries left. And that, that you're just in an, an unbelievable spot because we we start with a thousand, but it only pays first place. There's no final table bubble. There's no pay jumps from nine to eight and eight to seven and so on, like in a poker tournament. But what people start doing, they start playing as if they are close to winning, but you're not. You know, there's 22 four people left, 26 people left, but this thing's still going the distance. Our, ours ended up going. Into the playoffs, four people into the four people into the playoffs, and, and, and it went all the way to the championship yeah. round. That's right. So, so what happens though is because people feel like they're close, they they start clamming up and they start playing tighter, yeah. and they start playing the bigger favorites. They start playing the safer, the safest plays. They start sorting by win percentage. They're not sorting by EV. They're sorting by win percentage, and that's why Circa was down to like. 50 people i would be much more inclined to take some do some wild stuff like that because when 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 they tweet out each week what the neutral ev of each entry is worth if people say their entries worth two hundred thousand dollars they get excited well it's not worth two hundred thousand dollars i mean in a hypothetical world it is but you still have to play step you know seven more picks eight more picks you're not close. And if you do the safe picks, everyone else is doing those picks along with you. So you're actually further away from winning than you might have been two or three weeks before once you start going the safe route because everyone else is doing that. The only way it's going to end early is that those safe picks all lose. And the people that either were forced off the safe picks or the people that deviated from uh, the safer, you know, op- more optimal path, those are the people that are going to, you know, get all, you know, take all that EV away from you through your safe picks. One other, uh, one other thing I'll mention, I guess then we'll just wrap this up and this, I hope it doesn't come down to this. It, 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 it is coming down to it in the true suited pool. I think is you got only two, three people left when you're down to like, like five people or six people, it creates a really weird dynamic. Um, yeah, it does. On the one hand, you can predict who everybody's going to play. Right. But then what happens is, and this this leads to sometimes when people say, Eric, why why are you telling people who you're playing? You know what I mean? Aren't you afraid that people are gonna like use that against you? Well sometimes you want to know. Well, when when it's down <laughs> like five or six people, it's actually to your advantage to to basically announce and what do they say on the two plus two to claim your team. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. if because what because once somebody else knows that someone else is taking something, then it becomes less EV for them to take them, you know. Um, so it becomes almost like an angle shoot to like tell people who you're taking, you know, because what, what's the guy going to do? You know, they take your team, they're making a terrible decision. 
you know? So, and and so if there are two teams, one's like a seven-point favorite, another's a five-point favorite, you know, if I say first, oh, look at me, I took the seven-point favorite, look, I locked it in, I can't change it. They're like, yeah, well, not, at oh. Nitrogen, there was that one, there was that one year that they, yeah. there were two or three people posting and they yeah. would, they would post their, their pick. Yeah. And then they knew, everyone knew they couldn't change. Yeah. The, 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 now, so the, I don't, you know, it's gambling. Sometimes you got to do the stuff. Rules, that, the rules, but, but, uh, so, well, well, this is the one that I did. The, the, one of the years we won that, we won that pool three times when we won last year out of, out of like 11, 11 year attempts. Pretty incredible. Yeah. One of the years that we won, we got to the playoffs. Yeah, it was the first year we won. We got to the playoffs, and there were like five people left, and or six people left. And we proposed. Everyone wanted to make a deal, and everyone was like, "Oh, let's just let's just chop it even." Well, we had, I think we we had New England twice, maybe that year, or maybe it's maybe. That was the, the Seattle Super Bowl year. I think it might have been that year or another one. But anyway, I, we told people we'll, we'll chop for like twenty thousand a team, or 10, no ten thousand a team, or we'll do or we'll go for the max. But you all have to agree to take the same team in the first round of the playoffs, and I, you have to take this team. And oh, they were so pissed. The the way the pool worked is you could only. The guy only allowed – if there are five people left, you can only make a deal for five, six of the pool. So you had to play for a six of it. So if there's seven people left, you can only play for seven eighths. You can only deal for seven eighths of the pool. It's like a poker star Sunday million. You had to play for one more share. So the, the, the replies were F you, F you, F you. <laughs> and then the last person's like, you know what? I don't care. Let's just do it. And then all three other people uh, changed their mind. And uh, I don't even know if this was binding. I don't know if the guy would have bound it. But they all took the team that I had said. And then I took a different team. It was that it was that year where Dallas played Detroit and there was that catch-no-catch catch situation with oh, Terrell Owens. Not Terrell Owens. It's uh, uh, that, Des Bryant. Des Bryant, right, right, right. Des Bryant. It was, uh, it, it was that season. So we, we ended up uh, – we didn't win, and we 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 ended up winning in the, in the Super Bowl. But what what we did was it helped us create a unique path because it forced everybody on the same team, and then it, it allowed us to you know separate. And I don't know was it was it a nice clean thing to do? I don't know, but you know we we offered to make a deal for a certain amount, but we said we'll deal for the maximum if uh, if everyone took the same team, and they could have said no. But there's definitely you know a lot of those angles, and that's why you got to be really careful when you're playing these pools. I, I, I'm not. I know no one's listening to this. I played with, and I'm not accusing anyone of anything. But we were very nervous last year when nobody wanted to make a deal when no one had any advantages uh, going to the playoffs. We we were terrified that you know a couple of these guys knew each other and were playing together. And just to be honest, if one of my friends was still in, you know, it's tough. It's like you're playing for a lot of money, and you know, what do, what do you do in some of these situations? Uh, so you got to be really careful when you play in these pools that you just don't know if someone has multiple entries left with different different usernames or or if they know someone else in the pool and they have, and they have swaps. But that that I play these things knowing that that's a possibility, and, and you know I wouldn't even care if I found out later. It, it, it's just part of it. Well, uh, good luck to everybody who's still in. If you're still in, you know, post in our Discord, uh, and uh, you know uh, we'll we'll root. Uh, I'll just tell you right now that tomorrow I'm going to be rooting for Detroit uh, right off the bat. And then if I'm fortunate enough to get through there. Oh, the order of your games is great. You're either out right. or you get to eat. And that's then, Oh, that's fantastic. Then, uh, that's great. I'm fortunate enough to, to get through that, then I get to sw anti-sweat everybody in the one of That is Sunday. The most fun thing to do is is you're already through and need to anti sweat in a, in a double pick format. There's nothing. There's no better sweat. And then I will have the the Chiefs game late to uh, I get to root for your Chiefs. I mean, how good is this, right? Uh, so, so I love it. I love. It. I might be at the game. We'll see. I'm going Ooh. to Vegas. We are we are going to Vegas, uh, but oh, we might cool. just do a watch party. Oh, listen, like enjoy enjoy your trip and have a happy Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll see you next week. Same to you guys. Bye bye. See you later.